my cave. Last time we learned that we can view a transistor in its active region as a device that regulates the voltage between the base and the emitter by allowing more or less current to pass from collector to emitter. We use that knowledge to study how a transistor current source works. Today I'd like to transform that current source into a voltage source called a common emitter amplifier. The reason I want to have a voltage source is that most analog devices use voltage levels rather than currents for signaling. So, let's get started. We'll build a current source, as we did last time, except that we'll have a varying voltage level as our input signal. For now, I'll generate it using a variable voltage divider. I'll choose a set of resistor values that will generate an output voltage between about 0.6 and 1.8 volts. If I put this voltage into the base of a BJT, there will be a 0 to 1.2 volt level on the emitter. I'll put a 2.4 kilo ohm resistor from the emitter to ground. That will give me a 0 to 0 0.5 milliamp output current. This is a current source just like in the last episode. But I want to have a voltage signal. So I need to have some sort of device to convert a current into a voltage. Ideally, I want that relationship to be linear. That is, I want a constant of proportionality, call it R, so that the output voltage V is the current I times R, plus some constant term, call it B. But how am I going to make such a device? Is there any device we've seen with a similar equation modeling it? Yes, go ahead. Oh, right, that's Ohm's law, isn't it? So a simple resistor will do it. Let's just tie a resistor to the positive supply to serve as a current to voltage converter. Give it a value of 24 kilo ohms. The emitter voltage, V sub E, will be one diode drop below the base voltage, V sub B. The emitter current, I sub E, is the emitter voltage divided by the emitter resistor. The collector current, I sub C, is approximately equal to the emitter current. This constant of proportionality which applies to a voltage-controlled current source, is called the transconductance. It's the rate of change in output current with respect to input voltage. It's measured in Siemens, which are the reciprocal of ohms. The usual symbol to use for transconductance is G sub m. G is the usual symbol for a conductance, with the lowercase letter indicating an incremental change. The subscript m reflects the fact that transconductance used to be called mutual conductance. You hardly ever hear that term anymore, but the notation has outlasted the terminology. The voltage drop across the collector resistor is the collector current times its resistance. The output voltage is just the 12 volts from the power supply minus the drop across the collector resistor which makes it negative 10 times the input voltage, plus 18 volts. That is to say, the gain of this amplifier is negative 10, and its DC output offset is 18 volts. I've double-checked my parts box, and I have a lot of 2N4401 transistors, so I'll use one of those. It's a good general purpose choice. So here I've got that amplifier set up on the breadboard. I've got my yellow meter connected to the base lead of the transistor monitoring the input voltage and the blue meter connecting to the collector lead monitoring the output. I'll turn it on and I see the input voltage of six tenths of a volt giving me an output of about eleven and a half volts. Let me start accumulating the numbers in a spreadsheet 
so that I can see what the transfer function looks like. Let me make a quick plot of the values. That looks pretty good. The function is really close to linear, except at the ends, where saturation and cutoff are just starting to kick in. The gain is a trifle lower than we predicted, but that's because of our incredibly simplistic transistor model. The offset is also a little low, partly because the gain is off, but more because the diode drop between base and emitter happens to be a little bit more than six tenths of a volt. This looks promising. Now let's amplify a signal. The fact that the gain is negative won't matter in a great many circuits. Audio and radio frequency signals are AC signals, and for those the sign of the output generally doesn't matter. But that big DC offset is a little annoying. Let's fix that by making our circuit work on AC signals. I'll replace the variable divider with a pair of resistors that put the DC voltage at the middle of the range we designed for, about 1.2 volts. What's the input impedance of this circuit going to be? Well, with our assumption that the base doesn't draw any current, it'll be just those two resistors in parallel, about 9 kilo ohms. I'll couple in the input AC signal through a capacitor. That's made the input side of this amplifier into a high-pass filter. The resistor is the 9 kilo ohm input resistance that we just found, and we'll choose 10 microfarads for the capacitor. Running those values through the formula for corner frequency gives us a little under 2 hertz, well below the audio range. I'll use a bipolar electrolytic on the input. If you haven't seen that before, it's a special type of electrolytic capacitor. It's physically bigger than a polarized one, and more expensive, but it can tolerate a voltage across it in either direction. What I expect to see at the transistor base is the AC part of the input signal, plus a 1.2 volt offset. I could throw a similar high-pass filter between this amplifier and whatever the next stage of our circuit is. Right now, I can get the same effect by using AC coupling on my oscilloscope. Let me make the modifications on the breadboard. I'll have my signal generator put a half volt sine wave on the input side and tie one channel of my scope to the input and another to the output. And I see just what I expect to see. A sine wave about half a volt peak to peak coming in, and an inverted sine wave about 5 volts coming out. Note that the vertical scales of the two aren't the same. The input is half a volt per division, and the output is 2 volts per division. If I push the input level,
I eventually go beyond what the amplifier can handle, and the output sine wave starts getting clipped. When the input voltage is too negative, it's pushing the base voltage to less than a diode drop above ground, and the transistor cuts off. We get close to the full 12 volts at the output. When the input voltage is too positive, the transistor saturates. It looks like a tiny resistor, and the output voltage is limited to a little over 1.2 volts. I'd like to go on into how I arrived at all the component values, and how they affect the input and output impedance of this circuit. But for that, we need a better transistor model. I'll get into that in a couple of episodes. But first, I want to show how our simplistic view can at least explain what a few more circuits do, even if it can't calculate all their characteristics. So next time, I'll have a quick look at a few. The emitter follower, the push-pull amplifier, and the transistor switch. Until then, stay tuned, stay safe, stay healthy, stay curious, and take care of one another. Bye!